Good evening, ladies and gents. What I want to do, I've got quite a few of my own patterns that I want to do, but whenever I do it a, a night, I always want you to go away having learnt something. So if there's something you specifically want to do or know, please shout up and I'll diversify whatever. And I know it's a good group because I went with Chris there. I'm sort of uh, fighting against what uh, he, he's good at. So, but if there is something that you want me to do or if I do something that you don't understand, just stop me and I'll go through it. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> What's that one you've got on the screen? Ah, well, I'm going to do that later. That's one of my own patterns. I just put it in so we could focus on the camera. But you have to wait for that. <laughs> I'm going to be horrible to you. I'm going to do you another CDC. I'm going to start off with a fairly simple fly um, that... Ray and I fish with regularly and it catches a lot of fish. CDC pattern. I put a, so, uh, what I will do, I, I can take this down in size, but when I'm demonstrating, I always do as big a size as I dare do. So you've got it on camera and you can see it. I won't tie micro flies and you're going, I can't see that. So don't think that because I'm doing it on a, top end of the size hook that it's right or wrong. It's correct because this is a size I always tie it on but you can scale it down. And there's lots of things <laughs> that David knows I do my way and we all do that so don't interrupt, in, uh, <laughs> interpret it as it being right or wrong because there's not, in my eyes there's nothing right or wrong in fly tying as long as you achieve what you're after achieving. And Chris knows that. I I I do do show somebody something, and, and I do um, soldier palmers, but I do bear in mind I do teach the traditional ways as well as the ways I do it, and then I let you guys do it whichever way you fancy. So I don't not teach that way. So bear in mind. Is that hook barbless? No. Oh, I couldn't see a barb on it. There is. It's just buried in that. Oh, right. It's behind the, it's just right the jaws. It's right yeah. in the jaws. Yeah. Tie and thread on. And I just want one natural CDC. And I'm tying it in at the stalk end and pulling it through. So all I'm tying in is those tips. If you wonder what thread I'm using, yes, it's Steve Parton's and it's micro, so it's 12 0. Which Wendy has the last remaining supply in the world? Well, near enough. Near enough. Most of it, anyway. Got a lot of it. Put your hackle pliers on and twist yeah. the CDC. Oh. Oh, and don't do that. I <laughs> don't normally have. I tied it in too gentle, didn't I? <laughs> too tiny. Right, let's have another go. Twist. As you twist, wind it. But when you wind, those twists will come undone as you wrap it round the hook. So, yes, I'm adding a few extra twists as we do. And I want that to be at the thorax position. So tie it down at the thorax. And snip off the rubbish. I that was a check for the fishing. I thought you wanted to come. And I'm not concerned that there's hairs there because I want it to create movement. Now dependent on the quality of your CDC depends at this stage on how many feathers you actually use and I know this is very dense and I can get away with two feathers 
uh, if I was using the natural which I've just used on the body I would need four so just bear in mind don't whether you, can you see that on screen how dense those fibers are as opposed to come up you see the difference there's a lot more density in that and if I put four on it will be absolutely horrendous are they back to back the fillers? no the, on the curve I want them on the curve it's dyed doesn't have any effect on the CDC because it's the, it's the actual feather that holds the air the little curls on the feather because it's a makeup of the feather. So that is duck rather than some other water bird such as. Yeah, I've got every colour. So that'll be white domestic duck, mm. which are larger than the wild mallard. Yeah, it's a lot oh, bigger. Right, yeah. Most of it comes from France. And some of it, can you see the size of that feather? Mm. If you go on to goose, goose is even bigger. Yeah. But it does depend on the birds, the density that you get. I've tied in those two feathers and I'm back at the thorax area and I'm leaving those as they are for a minute. I'm taking hold of one more feather, tying it in the same as I did the body at the back end. And I'm just half hitching that just so I don't knock it off the end of my hook. Again, twist and then wind for the thorax. And because we've built up the underbody, that thorax is going to be that little bit bigger. Across my thread, tie it down, trim off. And again, if I'm doing something near the eye, I will always put a half hitch on. It just saves it all coming undone. I'm going to pull over the CDC but not as a wing case, as a loop. Pinch loop it down two or three turns and then in front to cock those fibres in the upright position. Two half hitches, pull the front back and a whip finish. What? <laughs> Did you miss it? Very, very dexterous. Yeah. <laughs> it's like watching a magician. <laughs> I've done so. I can't do anything like that quick with a quick finish tool. And then just, we can in this case, just trim the CDC at the front to the length that you want. Now that can be done in any colour. So you can do it all natural all yellow, all olive, or natural and olive, and yeah, it does work. Work well on the river. It does work well on the river. Works for grading as well. Why would you what what size would you go down to? 18. Yeah, something like 18s, but no smaller. I prefer about 14. 14 to 18. There you are, David. Yeah. So does that make sense to you? Eh? Hey? Pardon? Yeah, yeah. What does it actually represent? An emerger. An emerger. Yeah. So how does it sit in the water? At that like angle. So yeah. Like so. It sits at that angle. Yeah. It's a little angle. But you tweak it. And it, it does, it just accepts it. It's very good. Black ones are good when there's all thorns about. But what do you, what do you think Black the best ones are very good when there's all thorns about? Mm -hmm. this, this one? Well, I think the yellow it's one is. It's easier for you to see, yeah. You've got that little bit at the top that, yes, you do see that yellow. So it does help. But I say, first of all, we started doing it in just natural, didn't we? Yeah. And. We had no problems visibly seeing it, so uh, yeah. All colours tend to work well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Just looking. Say black works. And again, I'm doing it on a size 12. So, oh, and if anybody does make a comment, no, I haven't varnished it because I don't bring my varnish when I'm out. And I don't like passing a fly around that's got wet heads. So, don't say I don't varnish with flies, please. Mm. One group did. Said, Wendy doesn't varnish her flies. And I said, yeah, I do. Honestly, I do. So... I've just changed my thread to yellow because I know if I do it all yellow then it will show. It's a bit bigger one, that's it. I've got a feather, can you see that? And I'm dividing it roughly into two. So I've got a centre point. And I'm going to use that as the feather for the body. And then I'm going to use that for something else when I get further. So I'm tying in at the back end that front section of that feather. And tie it down. Almost to the hackle point. So I'm the length of the eye back. Hackle in your hackle pliers. Twist. And in exactly the same way as I did the first one, I'm making a body with the twisted CDC. Who's half the are those? CNF. CNF. CFs. Yeah, I know they're <laughs> Tie that down where you've got the body. And then I've got that hackle that is there, and I'm going to wind that as a hackle. So fold it back and wind. And yes, it's only one feather. And yes, it represents a spider. And it doesn't necessarily want to float. I want it for movement. Go. Pull the fibres back, just neaten that head. I always do two half hitches. If your whip finish doesn't work, your fly doesn't come undone. And there's odd times when whip finishes don't work. And again, you can do this in different colours. Thank you. <coughs> hey. What? Such that if I want to do a two coloured one. Found a decent one. For tying one hackle, a natural at the back end by its tip why I like these is because they're rotary hackle pliers and you don't get any twists and kicks in your hackle it unwinds it So this time it's just preparing it so that you get to the hackle point with one feather. But I don't want to be tying that thick stalk in unless it's necessary. And a half hitch. And then a claret hackle tied in by its tip because I don't want the thick stalk 
as part of the hackle. Just half hitch that. And in the same way that I wound the hackle on the last one, just fold it back. It just makes sure that you see where that hackle's going and you wind it in front without trapping any fibres. Go through. What was that comment? So he's got a bit of sparkling. Was it on camera? Mm -hmm. No, it's just a normal dyed. There's nothing specific. And I have done much to everybody's disgust, put lead under it and you get an absolutely superb sinking spider that's got movement <coughs> and we've caught lots of grayling on that in Scotland so don't dismiss leading CDC which I upset them at the show last year I'll just clear this up, else I'll have CDC feathers everywhere. Everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. Do you use CDC at all with any wet flies? Yeah, sometimes I do. If I want a little bit of movement in it, in the wing or something like that. And the same with, with um, little dry flies, sedges and that sort of thing, you can put some in the wing. And it just gives you that bit of movement and softens it, which is good. Plus it traps air bubbles. Yeah. You've got quite a few air bubbles staying with the pipe for a long time. If you were doing that pattern in 16 to 18, would you still wind the stalk or would you go to a split thread? You could do a split thread, yeah, by all means do a split thread, yeah. But if, if, you're in, if you're doing a smaller fly, you, you're using less of the um, thick stalk anyway, so you can still get away with it. It's personal choice. If you, you, know, you really want to get it lighter, then yeah, by all means do either um, a folded thread, a loop of thread or a split thread. Because I use micro thread, I, I don't tend to do split threads anyway. So I find it... I can do it just easier with 12 0 and, and done. Right. Size 12 short shank again. And if I can find what I'm looking for. Right. That. Anybody know what it is? It's like a paint roller or something. No, no. It's a toilet roll. And you okay. shut up because you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, it's a bandage. Yeah. yeah, it is a bandage. It's a latex, ba latex based bandage that they use a lot of the time at vets. It is for us as well. Um, but I wanted a substitute for detached bodies. And he found this in my in my workroom because <laughs> I'd thrown it there because I'm actually allergic to it, so I can't use latex. So we used it for my flies instead. <laughs> so if you're allergic to when you're handling it, how can it's you not much it to tie it onto a hook? I'm not that allergic to it. It's when it's on my skin. So it's only when you're wearing latex gloves or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. I've cut 
across the bandage so I've actually got four strips like four inch strips so I've cut the shape wider at one end than the other so it will form a tapered body and basically all you do is you lay it on the table and I can't show that on camera because I need the pressure underneath and you roll it so you've got that it's as quick and as simple as that and it doesn't unroll Oh, it's self-adhesive. It's self-adhesive, self yeah. yeah it's and I've, I'll pass one round in a bit. You can add pheasant tail to it for a mayfly. So there's various patterns. It, it isn't just designed just to do one pattern. And I've got six patterns in front of me um, that I've designed around that body. But the beauty of it is it will take pen, take coloured pen. So you can actually colour it, but you can get all different colours of it. One of them is camo, so camouflage. So you can even do daddies with camouflage, but blue, green, you name it. It's not fun yet, see. <laughs> it's what? The fish can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> when they're covered, no. Right. Tie and thread on, but I only want it on the front end. Go down, please. Thank you. And I'm attaching the body in that front section. Underneath it, because I want to just cock it up that little bit. And then trim off the excess. <coughs> trim it off at an angle and tie that down um, I just need to get some feather out because I've done this in different order Mr Gibson it's that one it's gone in the wrong I know because I've done it in a different order. That's alright. That's alright. No, I've got it. I've got what I want. It's okay. I did get it out and forgot. Right. I have pre prepared, just to make life easier for me. I've got it. I've got what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for my pheasant tail. I know. It's terrible. What I want to do is just show you how I tie legs. And I've got a hook. Little hook. Right. And I've cut my pheasant tails into that length. Just four or five inches. And if you pull one fiber down without ripping it off fold it through Oop. Yeah, through it's like a crochet hook without the latchet on but i can just pull it through that much easier so you can make your legs and then rip it off <laughs> but i find it easier to do that and you're not trying to hold one single fiber in any way shape or form and then I'm taking three of them and just put in where I've pulled them off the stalk together come off add three onto one side and I don't cut those off because I want to make sure that the other three are the same length and I match them up with the stalks off the other one and I'm not worried which way which diet 
direction the legs go. Tie them in. Cut the stalks off. Thank you. You can either use okay, ginger, blue dawn, medium blue dawn, dark blue dawn, whatever hackle you fancy. So you can adjust the colours accordingly. I'm tying the hackle in at this point because I just find it that much easier than tying it in once I've got the wings on. I want two feathers for wings. I tend to take what you think is a hackle point a little bit thicker than we do. Face to face, so curve to curve. Pull the fibres down. Pull that out of the way. Tie them in. Adjust the length so that that length is the same length as the shank. And I want it in the middle of that thorax section. Stand them up and figure eight. Go between. Thank you. Just last one. Just want to make sure they're standing up where I want them. <coughs> Just being careful, I don't cut my legs off. I don't mind if I do it at home, but I do mind if I do it here. You don't <laughs> I don't want that to happen tonight. I don't want any mistakes. I get enough of flack when I'm at home. Uh, what, not what the books is. <laughs> yeah, this pattern is actually in Mark Greenoff's book, and we showed it Chris yesterday. And it says four to five behind and sixty seven in front. You should say sixty seven, <laughs> just sixty seven. And the printer's got it wrong. So uh, if I can get ten turns of hackle on, that's what I like to do. And because it's the genetic I can just wind it. When I get to the front I do make sure that it's sitting exactly where I want it and I will go almost to the front so I've got the, just the smallest of heads I want as much hackle as I can pull the f get out of the way I've got one fibre that doesn't want to go back Half inch. And I know there's a fibre there, I can see it. Does that body float? Yes. Or sink? Floats. Well, float. Yeah. Float with that amount of hackle on as well. Yeah. And with that amount of hackle, yeah. it floats. If you put that bandage in a jam jar, it will flood all day. It's really good. And what I'll do is... Yeah. Pardon? You put knots in the legs. Yes. How did you do that? How did you show it? Crochet. Like a crochet hook. Right, it's just a little tiny hook. 
right? You take a piece of your pheasant tail, just pull, yeah, I can see it on screen, just pull one fibre so that you can hold the stem of that pheasant tail, but you hold in that little fibre as well. Make a loop, just put your hook in and pull that fibre through, not like that, pull it through the loop, then you can just adjust it to exactly where you want it on that then I can do a second one in exactly the same way through and the hook just helps you pull it through I mean a lot of a lot of people use it as a needle use a needle and do it but you spike yourself with a needle with that you don't so you end up with that I bought a, a feather with a, a pre grown in it and I thought well it's not yeah you can do but I, I am. It was something that Chris and I were talking about yesterday, um, and I don't like um, the knotted ones because they are in, more often than not knotted in the wrong place. For me, and some of them are like three or four fibres. I only like one fibre with the knots in. I don't like them joined together with single knots in. So if you whip these out for me, David. Put them out on the board, it's easy. Yeah, you can pass them around on that. Two more yet. There's another no. one to go. Anybody wants to Take them on the board. There they are. They're all different patterns that's been done the same way. You see the mayfly patterns. There you are. If you go actually onto Wendy's website, there is a, there's a sheet you can take off that's got all these patterns on, tells you how to time and where to get the stuff from. Just go onto Flies by Wendy, and it's on the website. Oh. It's just being observant that you've got materials out there that we can use that aren't necessarily fly tie materials and it's just one of those things that you you know as you're going around you think oh i can use that why not so don't sort of what years ago when um i was with one of the kids and you know the ribbon that they used to use on cake boxes mm -hmm. She came with a piece of that and she'd stripped it and it was brown and white. But it was brown and white all the way across and she'd pulled one of the strips off and it made fabulous bodies. So, you know, don't be... Don't look at it in a, a format that it's too wide. You can make it smaller. Come out. What's the website address? It's Flies um, by Wendy G. No, that's oh no, it's flies by Wendy. Just flies by Wendy. Yeah, just flies by Wendy. Can I have me? When you say on the bottom of the page, it says Coban patterns. That's actually called Coban that material. It just says there's a full list called Coban patterns. Can I have me? Capes. I want the ginger one. I don't want that one. I want a genetic ginger. Please. Thank you. Mm. Back to front. You'll see on one of the on the don I've actually put um just a pen on the just to mark the bands on the actual body. You happy with that? You can understand it. Happy? Yeah. 
Tie and thread on. And I've took one genetic hackle. I'm just going to pull the fibres back because I want to cut that fine tip out. Yeah. Yeah, caddis. It's quite effective, the caddis one is. And they're not, none of them are complicated patterns to do. But they all do well and truly float. You happy? The blue came from Tesco's. <laughs> Going to your local Believe it vet. yeah. Vets, vets sell most of the colours. Um, there's an online one, and it's it's a pets pharmacy. Yeah, pet pharmacy. Um, and the cop, pets online. It's called. It's pets on. Pets, pets for vets online. Or yeah, something. pets for vets or pets online. And they supply all the colours. Unless you know a district nurse that finishes up with the ends of the But rooms, bear in mind, that's <laughs> that's what I had for me, and that's what comes. But it comes in different widths. Mm. You might find it just an inch wide. Yeah. Um, I've had an inch wide on the green was about an inch wide, um, so it does come in different widths. But I had some the other day. Somebody gave me, and it was quite more crepeified. So it wants to be can. Can you see it's quite yeah. close woven, um, so it wants to be quite a small ripple on it, mm. not a big ripple, because the little one, the bigger one, doesn't yeah, no, attach from, itself. Boots, two boots. Yeah. Its trade name is Coban. Yeah. Yeah, Coban. Right. I put my thread on, and I'm tying in a hackle at the back by the tip. So the stalk's out there. And I've gone down the hook, and I'm just going to wind this hackle the whole length. That's why I've picked a genetic, because I need to go in touching turns all the way down. And this will create the body and the legs of the fly. One more. Has that caddis got a little bit of lead on, <coughs> on it to take it down for no. braiding? That particular one hasn't, but there's nothing to stop you yeah. putting a bit of lead on. I mean, you wouldn't get much on because it's obviously um, quite small, the area that it's attached to the hook. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing to stop you putting a bit on just to get it down. That you can presumably roll it round up, isn't it? Yeah, you'd have to wrap it round the hook to do it, yeah. And again, I'm on to weird materials. You see it on screen, right? The other side, it's a, it's a net. One side is quite rough, and the other side is just like your fluffy bits on your Velcro. And if you think of sedgewings, they're quite fluffy. And some of them have mottled markings on them. And I did this with one, and it ended up having a weird name on the top of it, didn't it, when I did it? <laughs> yeah, the printing came up in a weird position. I would never, ever use a decent pair of scissors because it's absolutely lethal. But what I do want to do is cut it in the direction of the loops. 
I want them to try and guess what it is. So all the gentlemen should know what it is. Pass it round, David, and then they can have a feel and see. <coughs> <coughs> so what I've done is I've cut a folded piece right and see how I've folded it and then at the front I'm just going to cut a little tag and cut it at an angle Oop, missed it because I'm doing it up in the air Any ideas yet? Backing for sandpaper. Is it back an abrasive in. or polishing copper? No. It is sandpaper. It is sandpaper. It is sandpaper. It's wood turner's sandpaper. Yeah. It's 600 grit sandpaper. <laughs> and it's for doing the last final. Oh, it, and it's got the hooks on the back as an adhesive pad to go on a. a no, use it, use it as it is. Oh. It's washable. It's a re reusable. So what I've done is I've cut the shed shape wing, but I've left a little tag at the front because I don't want to be tying something in that's bulky. And I want to put it on the hook and tie that little tag in at the head end. <coughs> cut off the excess. Neaten it down. You can do all sorts with it. You can add a green tag at the back end if you want little wool tag. You can put horns on it. So you can play around with it. Varnish it as well. Yeah. We have varnished the wing, but I don't like it varnished, but it has been used as a shiny wing. It's a very nice beaver sack. Yes. You varnish the wing. Yeah. Because we played around with it at Newark, didn't we? Yeah, bug bond on it. Yeah. It's called Abranet. If you actually, if you go on, it, put it on the internet, it comes up with Abranet. There's a company in Sheffield because we sent for it. And we told them what she was going to do with it, and they gave you a box. Didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's about I think you get about fifty sheets for about probably about six inches by two inches for about eight pounds. It's not expensive. Sounds like a branch purchase. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but six hundred is the best. But it you you get so many flies out of it. I mean, I've got one that's a finer one. But it's, yeah, it it's not as good. He sent me some, I think it's 1,200 grit or something. Yeah, it's a lot grit. finer, but sure. it's not the same. But don't worry, when you see, <laughs> can you see on there the little elephant and that? Don't worry about it. It gives you the market. When you've cut into it, like I cut into that, the number that's there, just flex. it just shows us a little fleck here and there on the wing. And... There's one there, look, with a you see that? It's got this little bit on it, so it gives a little bit of marking on the wing. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Let's get rid of that. Right. Took it out of the way. Just want to find. Do you actually tie commercially, as it were, Wendy? You know, I mean, you, you tie for me, or not yeah. necessarily me, but if I, I, if I for, wanted some I tie twice. for customers, yeah. Yeah. But I tend to do, um, I don't do it for shops. I never no. have done. No. 
Um, I prefer to look after my customers, same as Chris does. Um, I like working for people and giving them exactly what they want. Yeah, and that's what it's about. You know, you can I'd say... I prefer to buy a, through, a few through you. I mean, he's not a very nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, Chris. He's a good B&B. That's not nice. <laughs> but, no, I don't mind. I, I'm usually busy most of the time. I want to tie flies up for people. But they, they can't get what they want yeah. um, from shops and what have you but they can just say to me I want that and they get exactly what they want which is much nicer Mayfly yeah yeah I'm going to do the double I'm just sorting out a feather Mm -hmm. Right. Pardon? Just bear with me a minute. Right. Short shank twelve. And I've gone back onto yellow thread because within this pattern, yes, the thread does show slightly. Hey. <laughs> I cut it. <laughs> Susan was shopping, I've even closed them. I know. Someone else does it. We always do it. Sometimes we do it on purpose so that you don't think we're back. <laughs> you promised you wouldn't do that. Didn't I you? did promise I wouldn't do it. I'm taking off the base fur of a mallard dyed yellow. I'm then going to do a split about middle of that segment that's left. And I'm pulling it forward in what we call a wonder wing. And I'm presuming some of you have done wonder wings at some time or other. And the tying in point is going to be where the bare stalk is, but going across all the fibres. So we hold it. I've got a thread there. I've got an end that's annoying me. So. And it's a pinch loop tie in. And adjust it. It's not quite gone. And then it's pull the fibres up and hold the stem and tie the stem back on the hook. So you get a detached body. Snip that off. And I always do this now because if I do it wrong, I don't get frustrated because it won't do what I want it to do at the front end. I'm holding the tail end on my finger, putting my scissors between on the stem and nicking the middle out. So I've got a tail. So one feather, you tail your body and you hackle. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do now is make a post out of that wing. I've got one fibre there that's annoying me. I can see it dangling down. I need a drizzle. And again, like a lot of the patterns that I do, you cannot add a different colour to change the pattern. That's not long enough. Just a bit longer than that. No. Yeah. That's better. What uh, hooks? 
uh, do you use, though, Wendy? You know, have you got any preference? No. Oh. You used to use a lot of I used a lot of use um, oh, Sprite, oh, but know. I'm not able to get those now. So I use all sorts of Camasan and Partridge. And if somebody asks me for a specific hook, I'll do my best to use what they want. So I've tied that hackling with the curve of the feather, the right side of the feather, facing upwards. Still got a bit there. Feather to the front. I'm then going to wind. Bear with me. Taking that hackle up the post. Where's it gone? That's it. It's gone round the back. I'm just going to take the thread round the bottom of the post and taking that hackle up the post just slightly. And then we can wind down. I'm at the right point for winding down that post for a parachute hackle. And you've got right side up. I've got the outside facing upwards so it will curve, curve downwards. Down. Yeah, it will curve down. Pull all the fibres back, slot it in front and just tie the end of your hackle down. And you'll always have to just trim a few fibres off that stick forward. And that's the point where your thread does show from... You can do this with a normal hackle as well, behind and in front of that wing. But I thought I'd just do it, ch change for you tonight for parachute. Say it's two feathers, and it's I was just. just going to say too many component parts, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Far too many parts. Far too many. <laughs> God, God. But it just shows you how, you know. Do we have to get really complicated? Yeah. No, we can do things so simple. <laughs> I'm just doing one, very very quick, and I need a. Take two it will take two minutes. Less than two minutes. Less than two minutes then. Say when you're ready. Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, it won't be much more. In fact, I bet you could do it in two minutes. I bet you couldn't. <laughs> Challenge is on with. No. <laughs> I just want to find why I hope. Talked to you by an Irishman this one, wasn't it? No, well, that that one. No, which one are you on about? Oh, I thought you was good. No, sorry. No, no. Oh, I don't know what you're doing there. Oh, all right. Yes, I do. I was wondering you did. I thought you did. She's, I know what she's doing now. It's even quicker. Not doing the sheep one yet. Just to follow on from that last one I've done, thread on. I always say that if a fly catches, if a fly catches one fish, it's done its job. How robust do you think that is? More Very. robust than you think. Yeah. Yeah. It, I would think it is. So in the same way as I did that last feather, I've divided that roughly. And I'm going to do this exactly the same as I did that last one. CDC. It's, but it's, I'm using CDC. So there's a form, the body. But I haven't taken anything off the bottom. And that's for a reason. I'm going to tie it in at the front end. And go under. Oop, not twist it round. You wrap right back. That's it, you're doing as well. Nana. Always blame the materials, won't you? I know, just did a slippy slidey. It didn't want to go where I wanted it. Oh, 
He, he put some special grease on that one. I think he did. That's it. I only put two turns on and it wasn't enough to give it a, a grip before I went under. Then I get hold of all that front end and tie it upwards. And shorten it a bit if I want to by breaking it. Cut off the stalk. Little brownies love this. And a whip finish. And in the same way, cut the tail off the previous one, cut the tail out. And you've got a one feather detached body mayfly out of CDC. And it, it this one, it works, but this one is, yes, a little bit more delicate. It does work. But it does work. Thank you, David. Perfect timing, Wendy. Thank you. Should we take a break for 15 minutes? Yep. Yeah. Don't forget, you can still buy raw raffle tickets and squares for the fly box. Yeah.